Hello, this is Jeremy, and this is uh, the last video that we'll be doing this semester. And in these sections, we're going to just get an overview of a topic that's typically studied in more advanced courses, like maybe a business calc 2 or something like that. Really, for us, it's just about seeing what else is out there. And so if you read through the section, it will start giving you this idea of functions of multiple variables. And that's what I have here. And, you know, A is just a way of getting familiar with these. They behave in a lot of the same ways you've seen other functions behave. In other words, I can ask you to plug in values and figure out what that might be. You know, like f of 1, 2, when you have two entries here, this would be the first one and this would be the second one, right? We could have like six entries as long as we have six variables up here. And this would still work the same way. In other words, I would plug things in. Since x is cubed, 1 would be cubed, right? And since it's times y, it actually would be times 2 etc. So this would be minus 2 times 2 to the 4th plus 3. And if you do some calculations here, you get 2 minus 2 times 16 plus 3. And then of course, 2 times 16 is 20 plus 12. So this would be 2 minus 32 plus 3. In other words, negative 30 plus 3, which would be a negative 27. So this behaves a lot like we've seen before in algebra courses. Now what's new? Well, if you can talk about functions of multiple variables, you can talk about rates of change. What this represents here is a partial derivative of z with respect to x. So partial derivatives are telling you the rate of change with a particular variable when other variables are held constant. So this is the change in the direction of x when you hold the other variable, which is y constant. Now the big idea with these is you hold the other variable constant, and you do that when you're actually taking the derivative. So this particular derivative is telling me to say, well, let me write it out first and I'll show you what I mean so that I don't have to go pointing. To say, okay, in this first term, the x cubed uh, times y. Because you're taking the derivative with respect to x, you want to make sure that you're treating the y like a constant. In other words, like a number. So if this y was times this x cubed, if there was like a 2 here, it would just ride along as we did everything else. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. I'm going to get 3x squared, and then it's going to be times a y. It just rides along. And then since I'm treating y like a constant, this term ends up being 0, just like the 3. And so this is actually it. This is the partial derivative with respect to x. Now, if you can take a partial derivative with respect to x, you can take multiple partial derivatives. And that's what we have down here. Now, this notation is pretty strange. One way to think about this is to break it up. And if you were to break this up, this is telling you to take the partial derivative with respect to y of the partial derivative of z with respect to x. So in other words, you handle x first and then y. You work backwards almost. A little bit different. Now, we just found this term right here. And so this is actually asking us to find the partial derivative with respect to y of 3x squared y. Now again, this is something called a second order partial derivative. And normally I'd have to find this part here, but we happen to find it in part b. Well, now when I look at this, I say, well, since I'm taking with respect to y, I treat this like a constant. And since this is times y, if I had a 5y, the derivative would be 5. And if I'm treating 3x squared like a constant, the derivative must be 3x squared. Now, there's another type of notation that can be used. And this is equivalent to, in the other notation, f, we did x first, so partial with respect to x, and then partial with respect to y. In this type of notation, you go out this way. Now that's something you just have to get used to the way the two notations work, but there's a really nice chart in your textbook on page 463 that can help you out with that. And we can see in, in part D that notation is used. So another way to write what part D is asking for is it's asking for the partial derivative with respect to y of the partial derivative of z with respect to y. And another way that would be written down is partial squared z of partial y squared. Now you wouldn't have to write this part down every time, but it helps me when I'm doing problems of keeping track of what I'm supposed to do first. So in other words, we have to take the partial derivative with respect to z twice. Or excuse me, with respect to y twice. So here's my function up here. We gotta start with that. So when I take the partial derivative with respect to y the first time, well, in the first term, I'm going to be treating x cubed like a constant, so I'm going to get x cubed times y, so the derivative's just x cubed. 
In the next term, since it's all y's, I take the derivative like usual and I get 8y cubed. And then 3 is a constant, so its derivative is 0. And now the second time around, x cubed is a constant, so it's gone. And finally, this last term has everything with y, so this is a minus 24y squared. So again, the trick is paying attention to what's being held constant and going step by step because of the notation. I would be very careful because of this type of notation and making sure that I was doing this, the right steps in the right order. But otherwise, it's very similar to derivatives we've done before.